Lucas and Hudson are walking. Which one of them isn't very smart? It's Hudson. He's staring at the screen of his phone and can miss that cliff and fall over. Even though Lucas is blind, he still has his stick. With its help, he'll know about the edge of the cliff as soon as he reaches it. He's safe. Opal is spending a vacation climbing the mountains. Karis is climbing Everest. Can you tell which one of them isn't smart? It's Opal. Look, she's forgotten about the safety rope and is climbing without it. Not good. Gabriel and Archer are bloggers who take selfies in dangerous places. This time, Gabriel is taking a selfie while surfing a huge wave. And Archer has chosen to take one while standing on the edge of the bridge above the lake. Who is not being careful? It's Gabriel. They're both doing very risky things. But at least Archer has some people around who can help him if something happens. Gabriel is alone in the ocean. It's a very early morning after a party. Egan and Bradley are driving their children to college. Can you tell who's not smart? Egan. His son isn't even in the car. Delilah and Ellery are on vacation. Both of them decided to learn something new. Delilah is skiing in the forest, and Ellery is practicing skating on the lake. Who is in danger? It's Ellery. Look, the ice on the lake is cracking, and there's no one around to help her. She should get out of there as fast as possible. Ariana and Eliza are getting ready for a barbecue party they're hosting. Ariana is making salads outside, and Eliza is decorating the house and the garden. Who's not being smart? It's Ariana. While she's busy with the salads, the meat is going bad in the sun. Karis, a mother of four, returned home and saw that all the teenagers were quietly doing their own stuff. The oldest one, Amanda, was playing Uno, Gabriella was reading, Haven was painting. What was Ainsley doing? Ainsley was playing Uno with Amanda. Take a look at these guys and tell who is behaving stupidly. All the guys on the left, they will all fall in the end. The only guy who will stay on the tree is the one on the right. Detective Callum was spending his holiday in Hawaii. He was having his evening coffee on the terrace when he heard some noise and a scream. The balcony door of the room next to his was open, so he walked in and asked what had happened. A young actress, Chanel, was staying there. She said some man dressed in black and wearing a mask broke into her room and tried to take her away. She screamed, and the criminal ran away, disappearing in the hallway. The actress asked Detective Callum to find the man immediately. But the detective said Chanel could try to fool someone else, and he'd rather return to his coffee. Why didn't he believe the girl? Look at the door of the actress's room. Lots of boxes are blocking it. If the man had indeed run out of the door, he'd have pushed all the stuff out of his way. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to open it. The girl just tried to make up some drama to get media attention. Adam came to his PE class and told the teacher that, unfortunately, he couldn't work out. He broke his arm the other day. But Adam had a bad reputation. The teacher didn't believe him and told the guy to stop fooling around. Do you believe Adam? Look, he has a cast on his arm, but it's placed over his jacket. It must be fake. Mrs. Miller reported that someone in the neighborhood had run up to her and stolen her bag. 
The authorities interrogated all the neighbors. Bryce said he had been away. I came home less than a minute ago. Arden said she'd spent all day at home and hadn't been outside. Easton said he had taken his dog for a walk, but he didn't steal anything or see anything strange. The authorities arrested one person. Who? They arrested Bryce. He said he'd just come home. But the water in the pot on the stove is boiling. He must have been at home for a while already. Ames worked in a clock store. One day, he called the police. When they arrived, Ames told them he had been working when the electricity suddenly went off. He tried to solve the problem by himself first. Then he called the police. They soon figured out what had happened, and the lights were on again. Ames immediately checked the cash desk. Apparently, while the lights were off, someone broke into the store and stole all the money. But the police didn't believe him and arrested the man. Why? In the store, there were mechanical and electric clocks. But the difference between the time they display is just 10 minutes. Mechanical clocks don't stop when the electricity is off. It means that the lights were off only for about 10 minutes. Ames must have switched the electricity off by himself and then called the police. Nelson was a writer. He was always disturbed by teenagers gathering outside his house and couldn't focus. One day, the man called the police. When they arrived, he said someone had thrown a stone at his office window. He asked the police to officially prohibit the teenagers from coming anywhere close to his house. But the detective didn't believe him. Why? Look, the glass is broken at the bottom, but this part of the window is protected by the balcony outside. Nelson must have broken the window himself to accuse the teenagers. A family was on vacation, and they had no idea what day it was. Dad said, "Eh, I'm pretty sure it's either Monday or Tuesday. Mom added, All I know is that it wasn't Wednesday yesterday. Jake said, It must be Wednesday, or the weekend. Sienna was in doubt. Maybe it's Friday. Ruby said, Friday is tomorrow. Can you tell what day it is if only one statement is true? According to Dad, it's Monday or Tuesday. According to Mom, it's any day other than Thursday. So it might be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Jake is sure it's Wednesday, Saturday, or Sunday. Sienna claims it's Friday, and according to Ruby, it's Thursday. The only day that is mentioned only once is Thursday. It means Ruby is right. Paige and Quinley were sisters. They were hanging out together in their room. Quinley had a crush on a guy from her school. She decided to write him a letter. Paige thought it was a bad idea, but Quinley wouldn't listen to her. Once she was almost done, Quinley went downstairs to get some tea. When she returned, the letter was gone. Paige said that a gust of wind suddenly blew in and the letter flew out of the window. But Quinley didn't believe her and asked Paige to give her the letter back. How did she figure out her sister had taken the letter? When the wind blows inside a room from the outside, nothing can possibly fly out of the window. Colton got into an accident and had memory loss. Kennedy and Isla both claimed to be his girlfriend. They took the guy to the place where they had their first date. Each of the girls hoped Colton would decide she was his real girlfriend. Have you figured out who the guy dated? Look, there are initials painted on the tree, saying C plus I. It means Colton's girlfriend is Isla. In a hotel, someone robbed a rich gentleman. The only witness was Joseph, a cleaning man working in the hotel. He was tidying a room nearby at the time of the robbery. The detective asked the man if he had seen anything. Joseph said, When I heard the noise, I was going to enter the room. But then the door opened and hit me on the head. I couldn't see for a while. 
Joseph even showed the police officer a bruise on his forehead. The detective didn't believe Joseph, though, and arrested him for assisting the robber. Why? The door couldn't hit Joseph because it opens inwards, so he lied. After an accident, Karis was staying in the hospital. Only relatives were allowed to visit her. But three guys wanted to see the girl, her boyfriend, a classmate who was in love with her, and her brother. Each of them said he was her brother. Take a look at the guy's identity cards and try to figure out who her brother is. Her brother must be Philip. The age difference between Karis and Colton is 4 months, and between Karis and Nero, 5. Such an age gap is too small for them to be siblings. Maddox came to the police station to report his cousin, Damon. The guy asked Maddox if he could stay with him for a couple of days. In the evening, Damon asked the host to bring him some fruit from the basement. When Maddox went there, Damon locked him inside. There was no electricity and no light in the basement and Maddox didn't have a single gadget with him that could help him out. Two days later, at 4 a.m., he heard his cousin drive away. It was only later that day that he managed to get out thanks to a postman. Maddox found out that all his money had been stolen. But the police officers didn't believe him. Why? Maddox said he hadn't had any gadgets to check the time. It was also too dark to see anything on a regular clock. Then how could he figure out when exactly his cousin drove away? Hmm. Detective James Anderson stopped the man who was leaving a clothing store. The sales assistant claims you've stolen some expensive gloves. These are my gloves. I've had them for ages. But the detective immediately understood the man was lying. How? The man wouldn't be able to use these gloves. They are both for the same hand. A phone call woke Detective Anderson early in the morning. My house has been burgled, Mr. Harrison shouted. When James arrived at the man's house, he heard the following story. While I was away on business, my neighbor Adam was looking after my house. That's when Adam decided to chip in. I heard some noise coming from Mr. Harrison's house yesterday. I came up to the window to check if everything was okay. It was very cold, and the window was completely frozen. I breathed on the glass to unfreeze it a bit and saw that everything inside was in a mess. I immediately called Mr. Harrison. And now, Detective Anderson said, tell us where the stuff you stole from your neighbor is. How did James understand Adam was guilty? Windows freeze from the inside, not outside. A rich man's wife disappeared from the hotel where she was staying. Detective Anderson had to inform and question her husband. He found the man on his own island. I've been here for the last two months. I asked my family and staff not to come and distract me. I'm writing a book. And over the past several weeks, I've been working from early morning to late evening. I haven't even left this cabin. Anderson immediately understood the man was lying. How? There's only a thick notebook and a pen on the man's desk. If he had been writing as much as he claimed, the ink would have finished long ago. Mr. Dillon sold beautiful rare vases. There were dozens of them on the shelves of his store. One day, the man called the police. When they arrived, the owner had his head bandaged. His store was a mess. These guys ran into my store and grabbed the money and the most expensive vases. Then they hit me on the head and I blacked out. Detective Anderson immediately understood that Mr. Dillon was lying to get the insurance money. How did they figure it out? Even though most of the vases are on the floor, they aren't even cracked. But if the vases had fallen down from the shelves during the robbery, they would have been shattered. 
Janet called the police. I was crossing the road when a car almost ran me down. I fell down and hit my head. When the police officers arrived at the place of the accident, Janet showed them the car that, as she thought, had almost hit her. The driver arrived at that moment. He denied doing it. Detective Anderson asked Janet to calm down. It really wasn't the car they needed to look for. How did he understand it? It was raining when Janet was crossing the road. But there's a dry spot under the man's car. It means it had been standing there for a long time and couldn't have hit Janet. Look at these two bloggers. As you can see, they both seem to be very popular. They also have the same amount of likes. But there's something wrong with one of them. She must be hiding something. What is it? The girl on the right is probably trying to save money at the moment. The logo on her bag looks like the Chanel logo, but it's written Gucci underneath. Detective Anderson was on a train. He had very nice fellow travelers. They were talking and laughing when the train entered a tunnel. Everything was plunged into darkness for several minutes. When the train left the tunnel, one of the passengers, Ella, exclaimed, My diamond brooch! It's gone! Everyone started talking nervously, looking at one another. That's when Anderson calmly said, I know who took the brooch. I saw it. How could he see it? One of the travelers had a watch with luminous hands. And when this guy moved his hand to take the brooch, James noticed it. It was a scorching hot day when Larry made a bet with his friends. The guy told them that water produced by different companies tastes different, too. At that time, they were chilling in the garden of one of Larry's friends, drinking water and lemonade. You can blindfold me. I'll take a sip from two bottles of water, the one we have on the table and the one you'll bring from the kitchen. I noticed it was another producer. I bet I'll be able to tell the difference. Then he did exactly that. His friends were ready to give Larry the money he had won, but Detective Anderson, yep, he was there too, cut in. You were cheating, he said. Why did he think so? It was an extremely hot day. No wonder the water that had been outside for several hours was much warmer than the water brought from the kitchen. Rachel called the police early in the morning. When they arrived, she told the officers her story. I work in a museum. Yesterday, I took home several ancient books. I wanted to do some research. But then a blackout happened. I lit a couple of candles and continued my work. Suddenly, I heard the doorbell ring. When I opened the door, someone in a black mask hit me on the head. When I came to my senses, the books were gone. Detective Anderson arrested the woman for misreporting. Why? If there had been a blackout, the doorbell wouldn't have been working. Detective Anderson was walking along the river when he heard someone screaming. It was a young woman. She was drowning. James immediately left his shoes and backpack on the ground and dove into the water. Luckily, he was in time. When James was pulling the woman out of the river, he saw a passerby standing next to his stuff. "Uh, Unfortunately, I can't swim, but I looked after your things, the man said. Then why did you rummage in my backpack? James asked. How did he understand someone had opened his backpack? When he dropped the bag on the ground, the zipper was on the left side, but now it's on the right. Detective Anderson found out a smuggler was going to leave the country through the largest airport in the city. He arrived there and detained three suspects. Look at them and try to figure out who the smuggler is. It's the third passenger. His suitcase is full of totally random stuff. Women's shoes, some rugs, old dirty jeans, a wig. 
Plus, when closed, the suitcase looks much larger than when it's open. Detective Anderson's friend, Jose, hurt his knee while playing frisbee. The doctor let the guy stay at home, but by no means was he allowed to get up from his bed. Anderson was also there, and he promised the doctor to look after his friend. But at some point, he had to go away for several hours. He asked his sister Sarah to take care of Jose. When James returned, Sarah told him Jose had followed the instructions and had been sleeping for the whole day. But when Anderson entered his friend's room, he immediately realized the man had gotten up. How did he understand this? Jose moved his bedside lamp from the desk to his nightstand and plugged it in. Detective Anderson's sister, Sarah, was married to Michael, a professional cyclist. One Saturday morning, James came to visit them and noticed that everyone was extremely nervous. It turned out Michael was going to have a challenging cycling tournament. I promise I'll bring you the bouquet they give to the winner, Michael told Sarah. Four hours later, he indeed came back with beautiful flowers. But James realized right away Michael hadn't won the tournament. Ow! The flowers are actually from Sarah's garden. Detective Anderson was driving along a dangerous mountain road. Suddenly, he hit the brakes. He saw a man sitting on the side of the road crying. It turned out the man didn't manage to control his car. It fell off the road, and the man got thrown out of the window. Right now, his very expensive vehicle was beyond repair. Could you be my witness when I prepare the documents for my insurance company? James agreed, but asked the man to show him what was inside the car. The man took the key out of his pocket and unlocked the damaged vehicle. I won't take part in this fraud, Detective Anderson said. Why did he think the man was lying? If the man had been thrown out of the car, the key would still be in the ignition. Detective Anderson's friend Hannah called him and asked the man to visit her. She said it had to do with her husband, Martin. He told me he had to go on a business trip to the mountains. He didn't really want to go there because he hates cold weather. But he had to, so we packed tons of warm clothes and left. When Martin arrived there, he sent me a photo from his hotel room. I feel something's wrong with this picture. But what exactly? Anderson needed no more than a glance at the photo, and he realized Martin had indeed lied to his wife. How did he figure it out? There are palm trees outside the window. Those trees don't grow in cold climates. Uh Uh-oh, someone stole expensive jewelry from Mrs. Doris's hotel room. It happened at around 6 a.m. When the police came, the hotel owner told them that there was a heavy snowfall early in the morning. It destroyed all the evidence. Suddenly, one of the police officers spotted an infamous criminal. He had been accused of committing several burglaries, but always managed to get away with it. The man denied being at the hotel at that time. I only came a half hour ago, he claimed. The police officers immediately understood he was lying. How? there's a thick layer of snow on the criminal's car. If he had been driving to the hotel, there would be no snow on the hood. It would have melted or got blown away by the wind. And since it's sunny now, it can't be new snow. You are wandering through the forest, trying to find the way to a bus station. Suddenly, you meet a man. He tells you that soon, you'll see a crossroads. There will be a post with several signboards. The right signboard will lie, and the left one will tell the truth. A bit later, you indeed see this post. The right sign on it says, To the bus station. And the left one reads, To the forest. Where is the station? If the right sign lies and the left sign will lead you back to the forest, go straight and you'll get to the station. Damien is an artist. Recently, he has had problems with money. 
That's why he had to sell the only valuable thing he had, an expensive painting of a 17th century artist. The man who bought it showed the canvas to his friend Matthew, a police detective. After looking at the picture carefully, Matthew asked for Damien's address. He visited the artist and asked him where he had gotten the painting from. The man said, my granddad left it to me. You're lying, the detective said. You painted it yourself. How did he figure it out? There are electrical power lines in the picture, but they didn't exist in the 17th century. The police found out a diamond smuggler was going to leave the country through the largest airport in the city. They didn't know who it was and where this person was flying. That's why they searched the baggage of everyone who was departing on that day. Most people were angry and nervous, but one man was calm and polite. The airport security officers didn't find anything suspicious in his suitcase. But after the man got the sticker checked on his baggage, police asked him to come with him. They suspected he was the smuggler they were looking for. How did they understand it? While the security officer was putting the sticker on his suitcase, the man surreptitiously put his coat inside. The diamonds must be hidden in this coat. Mr. Carter, a rich man who collected antiques, asked Detective Morris to visit him. When the detective arrived, the collector said, I've just got a precious statuette, but I need to go away on business for a week, and I'm afraid someone will break into my house. My neighbors are so suspicious. Of course, the statuette is insured, but still… Detective Morris had some other urgent things to do. He promised to come back in the evening to figure out how to deal with the situation. But when he arrived several hours later, Mr. Carter rushed to him. I was away for an hour, no more. I drove my sister to the doctor, but when I came back, the statuette was gone. Detective Morris didn't believe the collector. Why? When he left the house in the afternoon, he noticed an apple lying in front of the left part of the gate. It's still there. But for a car to drive through, both parts of the gate have to be open. This means that Mr. Carter lied about leaving his home by car. A man with a bandage around his head came to a police station. I was hitchhiking when the car stopped. The driver asked me to check if one of the tires was flat. I bent over to look, and he hit me on the head. When I came to my senses, I found out he had taken all my money and cell phone. I remember he had a big car, large eyebrows, and a mustache. The police had a suspect. They found him in a cafe. But the man said it couldn't be him. He changed the tires on his car two weeks ago, and since then, the car had been parked near the cafe. The detective realized the man was lying right away. How? There's a no parking sign near the cafe. No car could be staying there for two weeks. Mr. and Mrs. Williams had to go on a business trip. It was a sudden and urgent matter. They didn't have time to take the money they had to the bank. That's why they decided to hide it under the doormat. When they returned, the money was gone. Three people visited the apartment while the owners were away. The Williams' neighbor, he helped them fix the TV. A housekeeper came to clean the apartment. And an electrician visited to deal with some lighting problems. Who took the money? It was the housekeeper. She was the only person who had any reason to look under the doormat. Laura took part in an experiment. She was locked in a room and had to crack a riddle to get out of it. On the table, she found a note with the numbers 11, 69, 96, and 88. The girl needed to figure out what they had in common. Can you do the same? All these numbers can be read in the same way if you position them upside down. A man on a motorbike crashed Mr. Ruby's store window grabbed a dozen expensive watches, and drove away. 
when the police arrived, Mr. Ruby told them he was almost sure it had been his nephew, Patrick. The officers went to visit the guy. Because of a heavy downpour, they got there in only an hour. Patrick was at home, together with his friend. Look at the weather! I haven't been outside since yesterday! Patrick's friend confirmed his words. But the police didn't believe this story and arrested Patrick. Why? The guy's helmet is hanging on his motorbike. If it had been there since the previous day, it would be filled with rainwater now. Look at these two girls and their fridges. One of them has never had enough money until recently. A month ago, she won the lottery. Which girl is that? It's the girl on the left. High heels, a flashy dress, and a fridge filled to the brim. She looks like a person who has finally managed to get their hands on big money. Look at these people lounging near a swimming pool. They all seem to be wealthy, but in fact, only one of them is a millionaire. The girl sitting under the palm tree is wearing a lot of gold jewelry. But all this gold is fake. It leaves greenish marks on her body. The girl walking past the swimming pool is wearing sandals with a large logo on them. But the name of this brand is written wrong, so it's fake. The guy who's lying on the floating mattress is playing a game on his phone. But instead of an apple, there's a strawberry on his gadget. The man who's watering the plants is the millionaire we're looking for. There's a Mercedes keychain hanging out of his pocket. He also left a $100 tip for the waiter. Ethan and his girlfriend Anne went to explore a cave and got lost. After some time, they came across two people, a man and a woman. The man, bearded and rough-looking, had a shovel in his hands. I've been stuck here for a week. I know how to get to the surface, but I need your help. Come with me. The young woman exclaimed, Don't trust him. He's a criminal. Follow me. I've been here longer than him. I know where the exit is. Who should the guys believe? Ethan and Anne decided to follow the man. If the girl had been in the cave for more than a week, why does she look so tidy and has fresh flowers in her hair? Several gold bullion bars were stolen from a bank. The police figured out where they could be and who could take them. Without wasting time, they arrived at the main suspect's house. But since they were in a hurry, they forgot to bring a warrant. The man told them he wouldn't allow them to search his house. Come back with a warrant and we'll talk. An hour later, the police officers came back with the needed document. They thoroughly searched the house and garden, but didn't find the gold. Suddenly, one of the officers exclaimed, I know where he hid the gold. Have you figured it out? The gold is in the swimming pool. When the police visited the man for the first time, the level of water in it was lower. A man shaves every day, but still has a long and thick beard. How is it possible? The man is a barber, and he shaves his clients. One day, a famous soccer coach went missing right from the locker room. The detective has three suspects, and all of them are from the coach's team. Brandon says that after training, he stayed on the pitch to practice a bit more. He hasn't been to the locker room yet. Andrew swears that straight after the training, he went outside to meet with his girlfriend. And James claims that when he was leaving the locker room, the trainer was still there. Who is the criminal? It's Andrew. He said he hadn't been to the locker room yet, but he's wearing not the uniform, but his street clothes. Five people were asked to step over a pencil that was lying on the floor. But for some reason, none of them managed to do it. Have you figured out why? The pencil was placed near the wall. How tricky. 
Detective Callum was having his evening coffee in a cafe and heard a waiter and a female customer arguing. He came up to them and asked what happened. The waiter claimed the woman ordered a soup, but the woman said that she didn't. Detective Callum knew exactly who was lying. Who was it? The sign on the door says that the cafe serves hot dishes only till 4 p.m. Take a look at the clock. It's 7 p.m. Even if she wanted to, the woman couldn't order the soup because it was too late. So the waiter is lying. Chase was watching TV in the living room while his wife, who was in her third trimester, was cooking dinner in the kitchen. Suddenly, Chase felt unwell and fell unconscious. His wife got dressed and took him to the hospital. When he finally woke up, he couldn't remember anything, including what his wife looked like. There were three women, each of them claimed to be his wife. Can you tell who his wife is? Firstly, his wife was pregnant and was in her third trimester, so she must have a belly. So it isn't the woman on the left who doesn't look pregnant at all. Now, look at the shoes of the other two women. One of them has her shoes untied. That's because she couldn't lean down and tie them herself, and her unconscious husband couldn't help her. So it seems like she is his real wife. Esme was having a regular walk in the forest. In the evening, she decided to come back home but got lost. She was wandering around until, guess what? She found the witch's house. She walked in, pet the cat, and asked if the witch can send her home. The witch was about to start a frog farm, and she needed Esme's help. If Esme solves it, the witch will let her go. If not, Esme will have to stay forever and work on her frog farm. She got two frogs. The number of frogs doubles every day. The seller told her that her little frog pond in the yard would be filled with frogs entirely in 100 days. How many days will it take for the pond to be half filled? Since the number of frogs doubles every time, the pond will be half filled the day before the pond is filled completely. So it'll happen on the 99th day. Emery was on the expedition and finally found an old cave where pirates used to leave their treasures. However, there are four chests, but only one had the gold. If Emery touches the wrong one, she'll get locked in the cave forever. The first chest said, the treasure is in chest 2 or chest 4. The second one said, it's in chest 1 or chest 3. The third chest says, it's in here. The fourth one said, it's not in here. However, only one of these statements was true. So which chest should Emery pick? If the treasure is in the first chest, statements 2 and 4 are correct. However, there should only be one correct one. If it's in the second chest, the first one and the fourth one are true. If it's in the third chest, then two statements are true, the second and third. So Emery should pick the fourth chest. This way, only the first statement is correct, and the treasure is in the fourth one. Detective Callum was in a bank and heard two women arguing. Mrs. Lewis and Mrs. Clark were both claiming that a handbag was theirs. Luckily, one young man took a picture of the waiting room just before the argument. So take a look and tell who the handbag belongs to. The handbag stands right between the women. However, Mrs. Lewis has a cast, and the bag stands next to her broken arm. If it was her handbag, she would put it on the other side of her. So the bag must belong to Mrs. Clark. Nick and Collins were traveling by train, and they were leaving at the same station. Collins stood up first and got his bag. But when Nick got his bag, he opened it and realized it wasn't his. So he accused Collins of trying to steal his bag. However, Collins says it was just an accident, because the bags looked exactly the same. Still, Nick didn't believe it was an accident. Take a look inside their bags and try to guess why. 
Colin's bag is only filled with a couple of plush toys, while Nick's bag had electronics and many books. Collins couldn't take Nick's bag by accident because even though they're similar, their weight is too different, and he'd noticed that. In the morning, Mrs. Miller was wrapping Christmas presents for her family. She left to take a shower when she was done, but the gifts were gone when she returned. She went downstairs and asked her family who took the presents, but everyone denied taking them. Her husband said that he was watching TV the whole morning and didn't even get up. Her daughter, Amanda, said that she forgot about the laundry hanging outside last night, so she was out picking it up. Her other daughter, Jane, said that she was in the kitchen eating. Can you tell who lied? It was Amanda. Her laundry is perfectly folded and dry. But it's cold outside, and the laundry would be all frozen if she just picked it up. Mason was arrested for robbing a bank. The police knew that his girlfriend helped him and wanted to arrest her, too. They had four suspects. One of them was the girlfriend who was lying. Another was his sister, who didn't rob the bank, but was also lying because she wanted to help. The other two girls were innocent and were telling the truth. So who is Mason's girlfriend? Selena says Amelia is his girlfriend. Felicia says Penelope is lying. Penelope says Selena is lying. Amelia says Felicia is not his sister. If Selena is telling the truth, Amelia is lying. Then Felicia is his sister who's lying. Therefore, Penelope is telling the truth. It contradicts that Selena is telling the truth. So, Selena is lying. Then, Penelope is telling the truth, and Felicia is lying. So, Amelia must be the other girl telling the truth. Two liars are Selena and Felicia. They are Mason's girlfriend and sister. Since Amelia says Felicia isn't his sister, then Selena is his sister, and Felicia is his girlfriend. Archer was watching TV when he got a call. Detective Callum said that his friend, George, was poisoned and asked to come. Archer arrived as soon as he could and was immediately arrested for poisoning his friend. Why? The detective didn't say where exactly to come. Maybe coming to his friend's house could be logical, but they are in some park. How would Archer know where to come if he didn't know what happened? A postman called Detective Callum and said someone needed help and gave the address. The detective arrived and found Mr. Hanks tied to a chair. Mr. Hanks said that he had been sitting there for several hours. Someone broke into his house at night, tied him up, and stole all of his money. His wife was outside the city. When the postman brought the mail in the morning, he asked for help. However, Detective Callum didn't believe the man and said that he staged it. Why didn't he believe Mr. Hanks? The letters the postman just brought don't lie on the floor by the door. Instead, they're on the shelf, where only someone who is inside the house could put it. If Mr. Hanks sat there tied up all night and was alone, it'd stay on the floor. It was Christmas morning in California, and Detective Callum got an anonymous note that someone going to Alaska would hijack the plane and take it to Hawaii. He arrived at the airport and stopped several people. Take a look at them and tell who's planning to hijack the plane. It must be the man who's the very first in line. It's Christmas, and people are going to Alaska. It's cold there in winter. Still, the guy is lightly dressed and doesn't have any luggage with him. It seems that he knows he isn't planning to land in cold Alaska. Damon, Karis, and Geneva are best friends. Now, take a look at their hands and tell which one of them is a millionaire.
Damon has a Versace watch on his wrist, but it must be a fake one. Look, Versace is written with an H. Karis has some gold bracelets, but she has scratched nail polish. Geneva has just one bracelet, but it's Gucci and silver, and her nails look very neat. So I'd say she's a millionaire. Doris was having a beach vacation with her friend Teresa. One morning, the young women were sunbathing near the water. Teresa went to a cafe to get some lemonade while Doris went swimming. When Doris came back, she saw that her smartphone, which she had left on her beach towel, was gone. Have you seen my phone? She asked the man sunbathing nearby. Nah, I've been sleeping all this time. At this moment, Teresa came back with a lemonade. She looked around and immediately understood where Doris's phone was. Who took it? It was the man, all right. Before the incident, the spade was lying on his left. Now it's on the right. There's also a suspicious pile of sand near the spade now. The man must have hidden the phone in the sand, hoping to dig it out later. Terry invited his friend Alice, who was studying to become a police officer, to a party. It was organized by his friend Sean. Terry was worried there could be a thief at this party. Throughout the event, Alice was watching the guests attentively. At the end of the party, she told Terry who the thief was. Have you figured it out? It's the host, Sean. At the beginning of the party, one of the guests had a watch on his wrist, and this woman had a beautiful necklace. But at the end of the party, the watch is already on Sean's wrist, and the necklace is in the flower pot. Detective Carlson was walking along the street when he heard the sound of glass shattering. He looked around and saw a large crowd gathering near the broken window of a jewelry store. The shocked owner was inside. The detective ran up to him. Has anything been stolen? The man said he hadn't understood yet. But then Carlson exclaimed, Sorry, I've got a thief to catch, and rushed away. What did he see? The store window was broken to distract everyone. People were looking away and didn't see this guy stealing a wallet from the man in a suit. At first, the wallet was in the man's pocket. Now the thief is rushing away, the wallet in his hand. The police had long suspected that Mr. Hall was a smuggler, transporting forbidden things on his yacht. That day, they knew for sure the cargo they were looking for was on his vessel. Several police officers came with a search warrant to the marina where Mr. Hall's yacht was parked. They examined every nook and cranny of the yacht, but didn't find what they were looking for. Mr. Hall was sneering while seeing them off. Suddenly, the youngest police officer exclaimed, I know where the cargo is! What did he understand? The cargo could only be underwater. Wrapped in a protective cover, it was tied to the anchor. Look at these guys carefully. One of them is not living alone. Who is it? It's the man on the right. He's got two toothbrushes. Austin, a rich businessman, brought very important documents to his office. But he had a meeting and needed to leave for several hours. Austin asked his secretary to be on the lookout for anything suspicious. His competitors could try to break into his office to look at the documents. When he came back, his secretary told Austin everything had been quiet. But when the man looked around, he realized someone had been inside his office. The secretary eventually admitted having fallen asleep while Austin was away. How did the businessman understand someone had visited his office? The globe on his desk is now turned in the opposite direction. William, a successful businessman, was having dinner at an expensive restaurant. At one point, he went outside to make an important call. When he returned, his case with money and documents was gone. The thief could only be another customer. When the police arrived, they questioned everyone who was in the restaurant. Karen said she had been writing a new chapter of her book. Paul said he had been waiting in a line to get to the bathroom. 
Donna had already paid for her coffee and was putting on her coat. And Robert was having a video call with his girlfriend. It didn't take detectives long to figure out who the thief was. Do you know it? The criminal is Paul. Besides him, there were only four other visitors at the restaurant, and they were all busy. How could there be any line for the bathroom? The police got informed that one of the most wanted criminals, Carl Walker, was going to arrive in the country. According to this information, the man was going to come by plane. Unfortunately, the police knew very little about him. He was short, wearing glasses, and traveling under a false name. Detective Adams went to the airport. He detained four people who fit the description. They were Mr. Lewis, Mr. Relkaw, Mr. Taylor, and Mr. Wilson. Look at these men carefully and try to figure out who the criminal is. It's Mr. Relkaw. His last name is actually the criminal's last name, Walker, but with its letters reversed. A detective is looking for an important witness. Without them, she won't be able to solve a complicated case. The only thing she knows is that the witness is left-handed. Look at these people and help the detective choose the person she needs. It's the waitress. She's holding the tray with her right hand and serving people with her left dominant hand. Look at these princesses and try to figure out which of them is the fake one. It's the princess on the right. The tiaras of the princess on the left and the one in the middle have a reflective shine to them. You can see they are made of precious metals. But the ice princess's tiara doesn't shine. It's made of plastic. A businessman arrived at his office after a long trip. He discovered that some important documents had disappeared from his desk. He immediately called the police and a detective arrived shortly after. After interviewing all the workers, he had a list with three suspects on it. They were Emma, the accountant, Sophia, the receptionist, and James, the sales manager. But all of these people claimed they hadn't been inside the businessman's office. It didn't take the detective long to figure out who was lying. Do you have any ideas? The thief is James. Both women wear high heels in the office, but the footprints on the floor are obviously left by a pair of sneakers. An elderly lady called the police. She told them someone had sneaked into her house while she had been asleep. The intruder took away the money she kept hidden in her kitchen cupboard. The woman was sure it was one of her neighbors. The police visited all the neighbors, but each of them claimed they had spent the entire day at home. Look at their houses and try to figure out who the thief is. Rick is lying. He wasn't at home. His car was parked near the house already after the snow had built up on the driveway. Look at these people carefully. Who does this dog belong to? The dog's owner is the guy in the middle. He's the only one who isn't trying to pet the animal. Can you figure out how many watermelons there are in this picture? Five. Gloria failed her math test. Luckily, her professor was an understanding woman. She offered a deal. If the girl cracked three riddles, she'd get a good mark. Of course, Gloria agreed. The first task was to figure out the answer to the equation. Can you do the same? The answer is 232. Gloria didn't need much time to solve it and got the next puzzle. The student saw several numbers made up of matches. What should be the last number? The last number should be 1. 
After every step, the number of joints goes down by one. And finally, the teacher gave Gloria several pool balls. Use only three of them to make this equation true. After a couple of minutes, Gloria figured out the way to do it. Do you know what she did? The girl rotated 9 and got 6. After that, she took the balls with numbers 13, 11, and 6 and got 30. Gloria's quick wit helped her, and she passed the test. You're trapped in a room with no doors or windows. All of a sudden, the room starts filling with water. You check everywhere, but can't find any way to turn it off. You know that help is on the way, but it's still at least 5 minutes until their arrival. You only have 2 minutes. After that, the entire room will be flooded. Obviously, you can't hold your breath for 3 minutes. You've got 3 objects, but only one of them can save your life. What should you choose? A straw, a rope, or an empty bucket? You should opt for the bucket. Put it on your head. This will create an air pocket, and you'll be able to breathe for a couple of minutes until help arrives. You've got lost in a desert. It's already dark, but bright moonlight illuminates the surroundings. At one point, you see a tower. But an evil wizard is looking out of the window. He tells you, If you want to save your life, solve my riddle. You need to figure out the height of this tower. You look around and see nothing but several fallen tree branches. There's also a watch on your wrist and your own shadow. What can you use to figure out how high the tower is? Your shadow will help you. You can compare its length with the length of the shadow cast by the tower. Then, since you know your height, you can calculate the height of the tower.